This is a lesson introducing the concept of work. Now, first of all, uh, a little bit of motivation for you know, why are we interested in the idea of work. And the main reason is that uh, we eventually want to study energy and you know, things like the conservation of energy and so forth and the various forms of energy. But in order to do that, we need to define energy. You know, uh, it's difficult to come up with a precise definition for energy, but one definition that will work for uh, most of what we want to do in this course is that energy is the ability to do work. Well, if we're going to use that as the definition for energy, then the obvious uh, next question is, well, what's the definition of work? So that's the purpose of this lesson, is to define work. And uh, then we will be able to use the concept of work to, co to talk about energy. OK, so first, the physics definition of work is, of course, a precise one. It's not uh, like the everyday language use of work. And it's most convenient to define work uh, with an equation. So let's use W as the symbol for work. And then uh, I'll write down the other parts of the definition. Work is equal to force times displacement times the cosine of the angle between them. And we'll take one uh, each of these terms one at a time, and I'll explain what they mean. Okay. And uh, this is the work that's done by a constant force. Uh, in the algebra-based version of this class, the force will always be constant. Okay. But if you're studying in the context in some other context, it may be that f isn't constant, and then you can't use exactly this definition. OK, so uh, this definition of work means that if you apply some force on an object, and as a result of that force, the object experiences some kind of displacement, d, uh, then the work done is the magnitude of the force times the magnitude of the displacement times the cosine of the angle between the force vector and the displacement vector. Uh, that's most easily illustrated, of course, with an example. Uh, if you have a book that's resting on a table, and this book has a mass of 3 kilograms, and we want to lift this book up at constant speed, a distance, say, of uh, half a meter. Then let's find the work that we have to do on the book in order to lift it that distance of half a meter. So work is equal to force. Well, if I want to lift this book up at a constant speed, then the force I need to apply to it would be uh, equal to the book's weight. Uh, and the book's weight is its mass times gravity. OK, so uh, let's figure out what the book's weight is, because that tells us what force we need to use. The book's weight is the book's mass, 3 kilograms, times gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared. So that is about 29.4 newtons. Okay, that's the weight of the book. So I plug that in for F into my work equation. 29.4 newtons. D, the displacement. That is how far uh, the book is how far it is from the book's starting point to the book's ending point. That's half a meter. Finally, times the cosine of the angle between the force and the displacement. 
Well, in this case, the force is up and the displacement is also up. The angle between those two things is zero. So we have cosine of zero, which is equal to one. So that term is going to just be one in this case. And the work that you do is 29.4. Newtons times 0 0.5 meters. So we'll do that on the calculator right quick here. 29.4 times 0 0.5, 14.7. Okay. So we have 14.7. Newton times meters. 14.7 Newton meters is the amount of work that you have to do uh, in order to uh, lift this book half a meter. Now, the unit Newton meter occurs quite a bit in physics, so we give it its own name. Uh, we give that unit combination the name Joule. One Newton meter uh, equals one joule, or in the abbreviation form, one Newton meter equals one joule. And you probably recognize the joule from some other science class you've had as a unit of energy. So since work and energy have the same units, uh, we already see a hint that somehow work is related to energy. OK, now I want you to uh, check your understanding. OK, so I'm going to clear the screen. Pause if you're still taking notes. <clears throat> uh, here are a couple of questions to help you check your understanding of the physics notion of work. So let's say we have this uh, weightlifter who is holding up a barbell. Okay, so uh, here is the weightlifter holding the barbell. Kind of crooked leg, it isn't he? Okay, let's try that again. That's better. Okay, so let's say that this weightlifter is holding this barbell up a distance of two meters. Let's say that the barbell has a weight of uh, 1,000 newtons. That's somewhere in the neighborhood of 250 pounds or so, uh, roughly speaking. Okay, and I want to know uh, how much work. does this man do while holding the barbell two meters high? Okay, so you may think that it is going to be 2,000 joules. Perhaps it is greater than 2,000 joules. It may be less than 2,000 joules, but not zero. Or it may be zero. Pause the recording for a moment. Uh, think about what you think the correct answer is and see if you can sort of explain it to yourself. 
right? And then when you're ready to hear the explanation, unpause the recording to see if you were right. Okay, ready for the correct answer? The correct answer is D, zero work, because work is equal to force times displacement times the cosine of the angle between them. But in this case, the man is just holding the barbell. He's not displacing it. Uh, and the question explicitly asks, how much work did he do while holding it there, not how much work did he do when he lifted it? So according to the physics definition of work, since there's no displacement, the man is not doing any work. Okay, now, I'm not going to tell him that. If he wants to say he's doing work by holding that barbell up, then good for him. I'm not going to argue. But according to the strict physics definition, he's not doing any work. Uh, let's do another check, uh, understanding check question. Okay, and uh, we're going to stick with the same situation and the same answer choices. Uh, but this time, the man is finished uh, doing his weightlifting. So he lowers the barbell down to waist high. And he's going to walk over and place it on the shelf. Okay, now the shelf is waist high for the man, too. So uh, here's the shelf. And then here is the barbell, okay, and the guy is going to carry the barbell over here at constant height, a distance of two meters over to the shelf. So this time the question is, how much work does the man do in carrying the barbell? to the shelf at constant height. Okay. Once again, pause. Think about what you believe the correct answer is. And uh, when you're ready to hear the explanation, unpause the recording. Ready for the correct answer? Uh, the correct answer, again, is D. All right, this time, uh, we do have a displacement, a displacement of two meters. And we do have a force. Uh, the force that the man has to apply is 1,000 newtons. But the force that the man has to apply to the barbell to keep it from falling down is up. And the displacement is horizontal. Therefore, the angle between the force and the displacement is equal to 90 degrees. And the cosine of 90 degrees is zero. So there's no work done. OK, now you may be thinking, wait a minute. Um, how about the horizontal force that the guy has to apply to the barbell in order to get it over to the shelf? Doesn't that one count? Well, uh, there are two possibilities. The uh, weightlifter may be walking over to the shelf at a constant speed. And if he's walking over there at a constant speed, then the net force in the horizontal direction is equal to zero, according to uh, Newton's first or second law, whichever, take your pick. Uh, if he's not, if he's moving at constant speed, there's no acceleration. And if there's no acceleration, then there's no net force in that direction. So if that's the case, then there's no force in the x direction. The only force is in the vertical direction, and that's perpendicular to the displacement. Uh, the other possibility is that the man does accelerate on his way over to the shelf, but I'm going to assume that at some point he will slow down because uh, I'm going to assume that he's not going to continue accelerating and walk right through the wall and into the shelf. Okay, so if he accelerates part of the way there and then decelerates on the way back, then he's going to have to apply a net force 
toward the shelf at first and then a net force away from the shelf afterwards and assuming that the barbell is going to be at rest after it gets to the shelf then the acceleration to the left toward the shelf is going to eventually uh, equal the acceleration to the right away from the shelf once again over time the average force on the barbell in the horizontal direction is zero uh, and therefore there is no work done in the horizontal direction. Uh, this ends the lesson on work uh, and in the next lesson we'll learn how energy and work are related to each other.